Thank the people of God for prayers. I would like to ask one thing for sure of everybody. That's obey the Lord. Like I said the other day, we've, we've got some fine preachers of the word surrounding us. All I can ask you to do is obey the Lord. Give honor to the pastor. Amen. Thank you yes. for allowing us to come and try to obey the Lord. Thank God. I thought it was the brother Alan Revival who told him to move the pearl and I stand up there and the Lord spoke to him about this revival. He let me know it was an answer to prayer, Brother Brian. So I want to come and try to obey the Lord, do what He has us to do, so that people can get their prayers answered. Thank you, Lord. Luke 17, we start at the fifth verse. Lord. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Yes. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, yeah. Ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, All right. and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Mm-hmm. Y'all can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. I believe it was Brother Darrell, maybe a while back, brought mustard seed. Yep. So small that you barely can see it. But when it's planted, it grows up. The Bible said, in so much that the fowls in the air would lodge in the branches. <laughs> but if you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up and cast into the sea. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Jesus. Yep. People think we're crazy if we just be out there trying to tell a tree to go get into the sea. <laughs> but all it takes is the faith. We may not say a whole lot tonight. But I want to give you our glory and lay down my heart. Luke 17. Verse 19. Now in this chapter here, there was a man that had a child that had the devil. He wanted to bring it to the Lord the disciples, they tried to cast the devil out of him. They couldn't get it done. Do it. Let me read this one verse up here. Jesus reproved them. And he said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How, shall I, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. He told them they were faithless generation. They didn't believe in Him. They didn't believe in God. <coughs> because if they would have, they would have believed in Him and the works that He done. Right. Right. It says, And Jesus rebuked the devil, and He departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Amen. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could we not cast Him out? Right. Right. Why couldn't we do it? Yeah. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Oh, come on. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, 
And ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and faith. The Lord dealt with me to hang this up here with that scripture on it. Early last week. And this is what the Lord dealt with. Whatever's hindering you from obeying God to the fullness that He has granted unto you, whether it be through gifts, signs, wonders, Whatever that mountain is that's between you and you being obedient, this week have faith that God's going to move. Right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It don't take a lot, Sister Nathan. A little bit, brother. A little bit. Come on. He said, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, whatever's hindering you from obeying God, if you ask him, him in faith believing, he's going to move that mountain. Amen. Right. That's his word. Come on. Help us, Lord. And I'm not talking about things in this world. And I'm not talking about somebody. I'm talking when it comes right down to it, when God moves on you to do something, whatever's hindering you from obeying that, yep. that's a mountain that's set between you and God. And if you're not careful, you're sinning before the Lord because you're disobedient. Amen. Come on now. Yes, glory. Hallelujah. The gifts are in the Bible. They are. Please do. Have they done? Has it pleased him? Yeah. God ain't lost no power. He ain't changed. Amen. So what's hindering him from working? In the full of the Spirit of God. I'm not trying to make you feel bad because think about it. These are the disciples that were walking with the Lord, that knew His power. They knew what could be done in His name, but yet they had unbelief when it came to casting out that devil. It may be doubt in yourself. It may be fear. It may be slothfulness. It could be carnality. You're overthinking it. Whatever's hindering the gifts of God from working in God's people this week, let's pray that it be removed. Yes, amen. Right. Oh. Yes, amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because there's a world out there that's dying off. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on, boy. Every day. Yes, they are. Hell's enlarging our borders. Oh, and we're sitting here with the gifts of God in this that we can save those in slums. Yes. We can help deliver those that's bound up. And yet we sit on the gifts of God that they don't work to the fullness of His Spirit. All right. Oh. Oh, me. Yes, sir. Come on. Whether it's fear, doubt, unbelief. I'm firmly convinced. That all the saints of God in the house believe in the power of God. Amen. 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 
We know, we've seen, we've heard what the power of God can do. And we've tasted of the goodness of God. Come on, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 I'm trying to stir that in with any desire to want to do more in the Lord. Right. Yeah. 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 Brother, come on. Man. Yeah. Good to leave. Yeah. We've all got family members that need to get a hold of this. Yeah. 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 But I can't expect Brother Brian to do it all to get my family saved. No. I can't expect Brother Allen to do it all to get my family saved. I gotta do my part. They gotta do their part. You gotta do your part. So that the whole body works together as one. Amen. 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 Don't right. Like Brother Brian said one time when they come through that door, they'll either have to go that way or they'll have to go that way. Yep. See, the enemy wants his side. He don't want us working. He don't want the power of God working. Because when the power of God gets to working, that's when the people get a desire to come and see what's going on. And then that's when the power of God begins to work. And He can get to convict their hearts. And they know they can be set free. They gotta want this more than they want that out there. Yeah. There's a stronghold out there on the world. Yes. Look around at the one we've lost. Let's went back into this world. And they left. The goodness of God. Epic Jesus. We may have to do what the Lord said here. We have to do a little praying. Have a little fasting. How much desire do you have for it to work? All right. How much desire do you have for it to work? All right. It's not for me. What God's given me is not for me. It's for the body. Amen. What God's given you is not for you. It's for the body. The ministry is set in place. For the perfection of the saints. If the ministers don't do their job and we sit still and we don't put the word out there, then the body can't be perfected. Amen. Come on, brother. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes, But if the gifts sit still and they don't work, then it gets quiet. And the people don't get what they need. Oh. Uh, You've got gift of healing. The Lord can easily come by when somebody's praying for healing and heal. But he's got a body. With works within them. He wants to be glorified through them. Yeah, all right. right. If you've got the gift of knowledge and you sit still and you don't share it, what good is it to the body? Right. It edifies nothing. Right. Got it right. It's home. 
creation of the God. Thank you, Jesus. We all sit quiet, sit still, and the body grows weak. And those little ones that are weak and weird, they'll fall by the way. A lot of times we hear about what used to be. I don't want to talk about what used to be. Let's talk about what's going to be. Amen. What used to be behind us is great and wonderful and it set examples for us. And it, those of us that experience what used to be, there's a desire to want to see more of that. But we got to have it in the want to be. Need to be. Yes, amen. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Blessed. How many desires more with the Lord? Come on, Thank you, Lord. What are we doing to get there? What are we doing to get there? How many hours a week you work, Brother Mark? Forty-two. Forty-two hours a week you work. If you stayed home four days out of the week and only worked eight, would you get a forty-two hour week paid? I think there was a prophet one time went to a king. Somebody help me if I if I tell this wrong. He was in battle. And they told him to smote up on the ground. And I think he smoked three times. I think it was a prophet that did it. He only smoked three times. He said, if you would smoke more. He said, but you only smoke three times, so you're going to see victory three times. If you'd have smoked more, you would have had victory over all the great people. Yeah, the arrow was. Smoke that arrow. Sometimes I think we do enough just to get a little bit of blessing. Come on now. To get a little bit of happiness yeah. and joy. Come on now. Come on. Big We do just a little bit enough to get the devil off so we feel a little bit better. Come on. Come on now. Make ourselves feel good. Preach it, brother. Come on. That's it. But what if we get down and we do enough to get that soul that's out there that's lost? Well, when they come through the door, the sun gets a hold of them. Yeah. But they don't go back out the same way they came in. Come on. Come on. What if we dig down deep enough and we get a hold of something? That when the devils come through the door, they can't stand in the midst of God's people. All right. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. What if we dig down and get, and get a hold of something? That when the diseases walk in and they say, the doctors say within six months I'm going to die, we don't have to get on a prayer line. We don't sit, have to sit out a text chain. We tell them, come up here and we pray for our faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's where? It's in the body of Christ. It's in there. Come on. Glory to God. It's in the body. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, well, Mark, I can't do that. That's why you did. Come on. Well, I was 
said, just say it this way. Well, I don't know if I could do that. I believe faithless generation. Come on. Come on. That's for the strong members of the body. Where's that at? Is that in the, is that in the Word? He said he put them where? In the body. As what? Pleased him. He didn't say the strong. No. He said as it pleased him. And he gave more honor where? Less comely. What's that? That's that little one over here that thinks there's nothing of himself. Weaker. All right. I'm all weaker vessels. Then maybe the people don't talk about oh how good they are and how good they sing or how well they shout. That little one that sits back that gets a hold of God when they need to get a hold of God. That's not something we're going to do for them to set God's people free. Come on. Yes. Thanks, Lord. He gives honor to the weak. That little pinky toe don't seem like much. But you right. Find out how much you need. Alright, Marty. Come on, Marty. There's parts of my body that I may not even know about. But I need them. Lord, that's hard for me to do. There's that man. There's that man. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Faith the grain of Nothing. I still rings in my ear. I can still see Brother Darrell coming through here preaching. Nothing's impossible with God. All right. That message, Brother Darrell, still rings through me. I still think about it. Amen. But he said, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Amen. Nothing's impossible with God, but nothing's impossible unless if we'll have faith. Amen. 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 Some people, I've heard some people say, they pray, Lord, don't give me that gift. <laughs> I don't want that gift. That's a hard. You might miss out on it all. What that's the very one of God one do you have? I'll use it for an example. He's out here. Steve Frazier. He moved down here from Michigan. You can spend all day with him if you got five words out of him. You're good, son. You got that right. Come on. His old mommy stood up in church and she said, I know God has done something for him. For him to sing and get up behind that pulpit and preach. We don't know what we're capable of if we don't ever try. If we don't try. Desire to do God's will. That's it. Let God show you His will. And then work in His will. And have confidence in yourself. If you're out here and you're not living the life you need to live, then you need to be here. 
But if you've got confidence between you and God, and the Spirit of God moves on you to do something, then obey the Lord. That's right, brother. Come on. Amen. Right. Obedience is better than second. Come on. Jesus. You know those times we get sometimes when we say, Lord, I'm in trouble. I need you to come by. I need you to help me, Lord. Lord, I, I, I'm in a mess. I need you to come by, Lord. Two months before that, did you do what the Lord wanted you to do? Yeah. All right. Or a month before that, did you do what the Lord wanted you to do? Come on. Come on. You know, some people say the Lord don't need us. And he could cause the rocks to rise up and cry out if he wanted to. But if we're the body of Christ, then he wants to use us to do his will and perform his work and help his people. But we can't do it if we don't believe. Faith as a grain of mustard. Three Hebrew boys wouldn't bow down to the idols of the king. He got mad at them, bind them up, and throw them in the flames. They said, King, if it be so, we know that our God is able to deliver us. Yes. But whether he does or not, we will not bow down. We need that kind of faith that we're going to do what God wants us to do. Yes. Whether He does what we need or don't need, we're going to obey God. Sometimes we get back, Lord, if you'll do this, then I'll do this for you. Who are we bargaining with? Well, Lord, if you do this, then I'll, I'll do more for you. You might as well go ahead and say it, even though I don't want to, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Blessing Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessing Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give it to him, Lord. Now listen to the rest of this. Luke 17. But which of you having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, yeah. Go and sit down to me. And will not rather say unto him, Make ready, wherewith I may suck, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. You can't bargain with God for the things you're supposed to be doing to begin with. It's our duty to do the commandments of God. To walk in His ways and be pleasing unto Him. We don't use that as a bargaining tool to get what we want from God.
Steve, and when he was a young man, he'd come up and say, Daddy, if you'll give me $100, I'll be real good for you. And I'll help you around the house. And I'll be a good son. But you got to pay me. <laughs> Lord, if you'll pay me what I want before I do the work, oh, I'll do the work. See, I'm a firm believer when you get a hold of this just right. Yep. And it gets buried well down deep way down in your heart. That first love that somebody mentioned over here a minute ago, you don't want to do nothing but be pleasing unto the Lord. That's right. You know what causes us to want to, want to bargain with God? I said, you know what causes us to want to bargain with God? Come on, Brother Mark. Desperation. We're desperate. We want God to move in something quickly. Lord, if you'll do this, I'll do more. We're trying to hurry, God. We'll be obedient. And just work for God. Yeah. Desperation won't set in because we'll have faith He's going to do what His will is anyway. If it's something that He's already commanded, it's already done. He's coming back again. He's going to split the heavens wide open. We don't have to pray for Him to come. He's coming. We need to just watch and pray. Now if you've got a need and you need God to move in it, then seek Him. Pray, fast, and seek Him. And if he comes to you and he says, I will, then all you got to do is wait. All you got to do is wait then. And then watch the glory of God be revealed. Some of you have just been in this a while. You ever seen the Lord tell somebody they'll do something and then they go out and try to make it happen on their own and then mess up what God was going to do? Yeah. I've seen it happen. God told the young man he was going to do this, 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 spell it right out. Send a prophet. Yeah. This, this, and this. And then thing you know, he's out there trying to do it himself. And he did this, this, and this the wrong way. And ended up backslid on God. And the Lord still gave him what he told him he'd give. But he wasn't no good at him. See, if we wait to let God reveal his glory, oh, it's so wonderful. It's wonderful. To know that something you desired from God and that you waited on knowing and faith believing that He was going to do it, when it happens, everybody rejoices. So watch your mouth. What stands between you and obedience to God? I'm not saying everybody's got one. No, not even my way. But if you feel like you don't obey God in the fullness, what's hindering you? Right.
me to say my job's hindering me, or my husband's hindering me, or my wife's hindering me, or my neighbor's hindering me, or my brother's hindering me, or my sister's hindering me. Because it's between you and God. You can overcome. If you believe. Now, I'm not saying your neighbor or your spouse or whoever can't make things hard. They can make it hard and make it difficult. Absolutely. And make you want to quit, make you not want to try. But they're not the hindrance. Your unbelief in that God will take care of you is your hindrance. That God can't keep you. They're not going to try to make you mad. He's going to try to make you not pray, not fast. Come on now. He surely does. He's going to try to make you doubt. Through somebody, it may happen that way, but they're not your hindrance. All right. They're the tool. That the devil's trying to cause doubt and unbelief in you. That's it. Come on, man. It's just the circumstances. Brother Allen talked about it the other day. Paul and Silas thrown in jail, bound in shackles and chains. They could have said, oh, woe is me. Look at me, I'm bowed down. But they rejoiced that they were found worthy to be persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. And they began to rejoice. He not only set them free, he shook the place. Everything was opened up. All the bands and all of them. And the guard was going to, I think it's, he was going to kill himself. But say, whoa, wait, we're still here. And I think he believed. And they went with him to expand the gospel of this. They got baptized. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Heal in his house. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You know, when things come our way, and we get shocked, and we get tore up, and we get discouraged, the Lord knew it was going to happen. It didn't shock him. When they came into the garden there to get him to take him back, he knew what was coming. He knew he was going to be crucified. He knew he was going to lay down his life for me and you and he knew he was going to rise up on that third day. He knows us coming in and he knows us going out. We get shaken when the enemy comes at us instead of rejoicing and thanking God that we're worthy for the enemy to come against us for his name's sake. Now, if you're suffering of your own will, that's on you. But if you're suffering for the name of Christ, glory in it and rejoice. What? Happy are you? No, we're not. Come on. Oh, whew, man, I fought hard all week. The devil just rolled my back. Come you put a saddle on it. Come on. Come on, preacher. I'm not saying you don't get weary. 
I've been weary. And I've been discouraged because the enemy's come against me. But I've always found my help in the Lord. Not in the world. Not in a book. All right. Come on. But in the Lord. I found my help in the Lord. Well, that's the Bible, brother. That's the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the end, it was the Word. The Word was made flesh. The Word dwelt among men. This is the Lord. He's the Word. You're all right, brother. You want comfort? Get the word. That's right. You want joy? Get the word. Yeah. You need strength? Get the word. Yeah. Temptation comes your way. Do what the Lord did. It's the word. It is written. Yeah. It is written. All right. I'm afraid some of us, we ain't even come. We ain't got enough to stop it. You know what we do? Hey, Brother Brian. Yeah. I need your help. The devil's fighting the alcohol. And we rely on the ministers of God to give us the word we need to fight with. All right. That's the truth. No. Amen. Now, that's what we're here for. So don't get me wrong. Come on, please. But when you sit at the house and you're digging in this word because you need help in something and the Lord gives you scriptures and then you come in here and the man of God preaches it to you and confirms it to you, yeah. there ain't no devils in hell going to take you away from it. Then you can stand on the word. Because it's real. Come on, brother. It wasn't just by coincidence they put it on there that he's going to write it up on the tables of our heart. Yeah. So we have it when we need it. Yep. We don't have to go to a man and say, I need you to do a sacrifice for me because I've done something wrong. Brother Brown, I brought that out real good yesterday. It's done away with. We don't need that no more. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ. One on one. Be in the Lord. Relationship with Him and Him alone. That's right. You want a friend? Give him the word. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, there ain't nothing like it. Sit. Don't seem like nobody cares about you. Nobody comes and checks on you. And you feel like you're just sitting alone. And you hear that still small voice. Come on, say here, Mike. Yeah, come on. I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. But I'll go with you always, even till the ends of the world. Amen. And he says, What do you need? What do you need? And he gives us exactly what we need. See, we get tore up when things happen. Yeah. They don't catch the Lord by surprise. He already knows. Maybe he's waiting to see what you do. Come on now. And how you do it. What they going to cling to that integrity like Job? 
Well, they're going to turn from me and go in their own way.